Hi. I'm Sonny Fox, and these are my friends and fellow adventurers. This is Ginger. Hello. This is Pud. Hi. You know, each week Ginger and Pud and I take a trip to different and exciting places. And this week we're at a very exciting place. It's called Greenwich House Pottery. And here come people from all walks of life, all ages, youngsters and adults. And they're all brought together by a piece of earth. That's right. A piece of special kind of earth called clay. And when they come here, they take this clay and they make it into all kinds of very beautiful and very useful objects. Pitchers and vases and, and uh, ashtrays, things of that sort. All around us now, they're at work. And not only do you have um, amateurs, students, but you also have professional artists like Mr. Crumrine over there. Uh, James Crumrine is, an, uh, is uh, an instructor here. He's also an internationally known artist when it comes to making beautiful things out of clay. Now, before we leave here, we're going to see Mr. Crumrine take a piece of clay right from its raw stage, and uh, work it into a very beautiful picture. We'll see that whole thing take place before we leave. Now, uh, right now, though, let's go over and meet Miss Hartsick over there, Miss Jane Hartsick, who is the director of Greenwich House. Hi, Miss Hartsick. Hello. This is Ginger. Hello, Hello. Ginger. This is Pud. Hi, Hi, Pud. How are you? Now, I was telling them about all the things that you do down here, all the things that you make, but all these things start from what you got in your hand there, this uh, lump of clay, is that right? Yes, that's a piece of earth, but a special piece of earth, because it's nice and pliable. But we have first have to get it worked well in this nice pliable condition. Before Don't you we start here? No, we start in the wedging room, where we store our clay. And that's where they do what? Where they wedge the clay and get it in, in condition to get the air bubbles out of the clay. Oh. Well, why do they have to get the air bubbles out of the clay? Well, if there was an air bubble in it and you fired it, it would blow up. Mm. Just well, be wasted work then. That looks like a lot of fun. Would you like to clay throw down? clay like that? <laughs> yes. Now, how do they know when there are air bubbles in it? Well, you see, you cut it on the wire, and there's a, an, if you see an air bubble, why well, then you uh, have to re-wedge it again. Now, when it's all ready for, uh, when it's finished there, it's ready for working, is that right? Yes. And then it's when it comes into this, this is your main studio, I presume, where these boys and girls are at work here? Yes. Where we have the wheels and they're working at the tables. And you see, Pud and Ginger, just all around the room, there are all kinds of things being made by all kinds of people. And they all start from that same piece of clay. And I suppose Mr. Crumrine starts the same way. Yes, he does. He's wedged his clay and is ready to throw on the wheel. Throw it on the wheel? <coughs> yes, he throws it down on the wheel head. Well, now, before he does anything to that, th uh, that clay, let's take a look at the wheel itself, Pud and Ginger. Uh, you notice if you look down there, but that's not operated by electricity. No, he's kicking it. Right. And that's a very special kind of a wheel, too, isn't it, Miss Hartzik? Yes, that's a, a potter's wheel. The big wheel at the bottom is heavy and well-balanced so that it keeps its momentum while he's working on it. And then... Of course, that's a big piece of clay, and he has to put a lot of pressure on it. That's all connected, you see. The bottom wheel's connected with that um, shaft up to the top of the wheel there, where he's now working on the clay. What is he doing? Now he's going to, he's centering it, and now he'll open the uh, inside. See, he's making a big hole in the middle. And you have to go in the middle so it'll be even all the way around. Now you'll see that he's bringing up the walls of the clay. Oh, it's growing. It's bigger and bigger all the time. What about the water he keeps on pouring on there? Well, that's for lubrication, so that his hand doesn't stick to the clay and tear it. Now, as it gets thinner, it's more delicate and it's likely to collapse, so you have to be very careful and come up slowly while the wheel is going around. The shape is done from both inside and outside. Yes, so that the inside is the same shape as the outside. Well, Pud and Ginger, that uh, process he's involved with now, Mr. Cumberland's involved with, goes on for quite a while. And um, I think what we'll do is we'll look at some of the other aspects of, of making this kind okay. of uh, artwork and see how some. We'll come back to Mr. Cumberland a little later. Now, if Pud and Ginger wanted to be artists with clay, like Mr. Cumberland, you wanted to be artists with clay, like Mr. Cumberland, how would they start? Where would they start? Well, first you should start with your hands, because so you can get the feel of clay and know its limitations. Would you like to try? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Now, they're, uh, they're not quite dressed for this. What do, you, uh, what do we do about that? Oh, well, we'll put on an apron. How about that? Okay. okay. Maybe you better roll up your sleeves, too. Put those braids around. Would you tie my apron? Yes, ma'am. Are you ready to 
ready to join some of these other boys and girls at the table here and get your first instruction on how to use clay. Here, you want to sit down? Sit down. Okay. I'll give you some clay. I notice you keep it uh, in a plastic bag. What's the purpose of that? We have to keep it damp. See, the heat from the room would dry it out and make it crack. That's important for anybody who has clay at now home, too. Now you want to, to start with a nice round ball, like a baseball. You play baseball? Yes, all the time. Oh, wonderful. Well, this is just like a baseball. We'll make a pinch pot. A pinch pot? What's that? Well, it's a pinch pot you, you pinch. Just pinch it with your hands. Put your thumb right in the middle, mm. just like Mr. Crumrine did, only you're doing it with your hands and not on the wheel. And just work your hands around. That's right, so that you're pinching out a bowl or ashtray or something immediately. Now, uh, while you're pinch potting there, and Ginger, you're doing pretty well, too, uh, let's go on over and speak to some of the other boys and girls here and find out what they're doing. Oh, well, here's a lovely head over here. What's your name? Walter Sherman. Walter, uh, is that a head of anybody in particular? No, it's just a regular head. By golly, it's a nice one, too. Walter, um, wh why do you like working with clay? Well, I get it pays off. It, it pays off? Yeah, I, pl I get a pleasure out of it. Ah, well, that's a good reason. What do you do with all the things you make, Walter? Well, I bring them home, and I give the ones that my mother likes to her and give the rest to my neighbor. Oh, and I'm sure they're very happy to, to uh, get the gifts, too. Well, good luck on that, Walter. I think you're doing fine. What's your name? Jan Stacy. Jan, what are you making? An ashtray. Jan, uh, how many um, things have you made? Uh, do you, can you think back of all the things you've made here? How many do you suppose you've made? I don't know. Well, take a guess. Twenty-five, maybe. Mm -hmm. What are they? Have they all been ashtrays? No. What have they been? Pots and pans, ashtrays. Who do you give all these things to? My mother. Does she use them? Yes. Has she ever had an accident with one of your pots or pans, Jan? Has anything ever happened while she's been cooking with them? Um, nope. Never any of them ever exploded or broke or anything like that? Nope. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> air bubbles, right? Yeah, all the air bubbles were gotten out. Now, what's your name? Kim Resnick. Kim, how long have you been coming down to Greenwich House Pottery? Since this year started. Uh, do you like it? Yes. What's the favorite thing you've ever made? I don't know. Well, just think <laughs> about it a little bit. Isn't there something that you've made that you like more than anything else? No. What's, what's, what do you like to make the best? Everything. Well, that's a <laughs> takes care of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what is she making over there that looks like a snake? Well, now that's the coil piece, which is the next step from the pinch pot so that you can make a bigger pot. She'll put the coil around the piece on the edge all the way around the top edge, and then weld that on good so that it doesn't crack off in the firing or glazing. So That's you so you can build it up just as high as you want? Yes, because you're in a pinch pot, you can't go very far. But that could be a tremendous piece. Well, Pud and Ginger, incidentally, while all this is going on, you know, at this table, there are other people working around, as we told you before, and some of them are real artists. Now, for instance, look at that sculpture over there. Isn't that very beautiful? I always thought the statues were made out of stone and metal. No, this it can be, but this one is made of clay. This is Hilda Needle, one of our uh, good students, who is making, has built it up from clay, just like you're building up the pinch pot, only she's going a little bit further. Does that thing revolve? May we see it turned around just a little bit? We get an idea what it looks it's like. It's a wonderful texture she has. Gorgeous.